Greetings, my name is Drew Bagby, and today I'd like to talk about Creative Commons, the past to the present. How did we get here? The need for Creative Commons licensing arises from the tension created by copyright law and the existence of the internet. Our ability as humans to spread information and knowledge with the click of a button or a share icon through the internet was something that original copyright law creators did not seemingly anticipate. And though many creators are willing to spread their works far and wide, often getting around the all rights reserved feature of copyright was difficult. A mechanism did not exist that would allow a creator to signal to the world, please use my creation in this way. Thus, before Creative Commons and CC licensing, the amount and spread of information via the internet outpaced the confines created by copyright law around the world, leading to a breaking point with the Sonny Bono Copyright Term Extension Act, also known as CTEA. First off, who is Sonny Bono? Sonny Bono was a U.S. politician and former celebrity best known for his television and music career with his wife, or his former wife, Cher. Bono was a sponsor on the CTEA, but died tragically in a ski accident. To memorialize Bono, the CTEA was named in his honor. Now that we've answered that question, more importantly, what does the CTEA do for copyright? Copyright protections on creative works were extended to 70 years past the life of the creator. CTEA is often referred to as the Mickey Mouse Protection Act due to the timing of the act and the expiration date of the original Mickey Mouse cartoon, Steamboat Willie. In 1998, the cartoon was due to expire and enter the public domain, but the CTEA saved it. At this time, we meet Lawrence Lessage. Lessage was a Stanford University law professor who did not agree with the new CTEA and the extension of the copyright term. The continual renewal of the copyright terms and extensions hampered future creativity and knowledge exchange by keeping works out of the public domain. Lessage argued that the CTEA was unconstitutional. The terms of copyright were continuously being extended with each new act, thus pushing certain documents and creative works further and further out of reaching the public domain. CTEA also clashed with the purpose of copyright laws written into the U.S. Constitution in Lessage's assessment. This all led Lessage to defend Eric Eldred in the Supreme Court case Eldred v. Ashcroft. Eldridge was in the business of transitioning works from copyright to the public domain and this decision would make him have to stop his work on various items. Unfortunately, Eldred lost. This is Mr. Eldred here. Though Eldred loses in the Supreme Court, Lessage is inspired to create the Creative Commons nonprofit organization. And in 2002, Creative Commons licenses developed to help creators work within the confines of copyright law, but still maintain flexibility with how works are distributed. We no longer live by the simple rule, all rights reserved. Copyright is applied regardless if a creator wants it or not. CC licensing helps others better understand if and how a copyright holder wants their creations to be copied and or adapted. There are several Creative Common licenses. The gradient on the left helps me visualize the levels of CC licenses that are available. At the top, we see the symbols representing the most open types of works, the green zone. And at the bottom, we see the common 
all rights reserved symbol or in the red zone. I cannot tell you what all of these symbols mean. That's why I'm enrolled in this course. Since the beginning of Creative Commons licensing, there has been an exponential rise in the number of Creative Commons licensed works. The infograph on this slide gives you an idea of just how quickly the rise of CC licensed works has been. Today, there are approximately 1.6 billion CC licensed works available on over 9 million websites worldwide. What do you think this suggests about creators' desire to share their works? In my opinion, it tells me that there are a lot of creators out there ready and willing to share their creations with the world in hopes to inspire others. If you want to get involved with Creative Commons, you can obviously become a creator or reuser of Creative Commons licensing. You can research the organization, which is the nonprofit side of Creative Commons that focuses on the progression of the open movement, as well as legal issues and infrastructure surrounding Creative Commons licensing. And then finally, Creative Commons, the movement really just refers to the open movement in general. Um, OER resources are an extremely wonderful thing for students, particularly in the community college setting where I work. So we're always trying to push open educational resources. Finally, another place to join um, a community of like-minded individuals surrounding Creative Commons is the Creative Commons or CC Global Network, where you can interact and gain insight from around the world about Creative Commons. Thank you for attending my short presentation about Creative Commons, past to the present. My email is listed here. If you have any questions or comments, please feel free to contact me. Have a nice day.